uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Charles Dean. Charles, uh, Charles and Dean. This is a, a, a bit like a, a Daily Telegraph leader conference. Uh, I'm, 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 thank you. I'm very glad, Charles, that you were so concerned about my security because actually the uh, my own team didn't want me to come to this event tonight because they said that there were some uncooperative crusties and protesters of all kinds uh, littering the, the road. And they said there was some risk that I would be egged on my way in here. And so I immediately asked the faint hearts in my private office, what would Margaret Thatcher have done tonight? What would Maggie do? And uh, what would she have done would you, if, you, if she took the extraordinary risk of sending a task force halfway around the world through tumultuous seas to recapture the Falklands, I think she would have crossed Whitehall to come uh, to Banqueting Hall tonight. And frankly, Charles, wild horses would not have kept me away because uh, this volume, which I've had in my hands for quite, quite a long time this afternoon, in spite of having lots of other things to do, uh, this volume marks the conclusion of what I think we would all agree is not just the greatest recent work of biography, but it is also, in our lifetimes, the greatest work of modern British history. I would say. I'm not, and I, I, I'm not laying it on too thick. I'm not laying it on too thick with the almost obsessive lust for accuracy and detail that is the hallmark of all great Daily Telegraph journalists. <laughs> Charles has not only been through every possible literary uh, source from the uh, epistolary source from the cabinet minutes to the actual letters of Dennis Thatcher to the seating, seating plans of Carla Powell's dinner parties. He has not only sieved every one of Margaret Thatcher's much underlined marginalia uh, for new meaning, but he's talked to the principals and everybody associated with them, uh, harvesting a huge and unique granary of direct eyewitness testimonials, which could only have been done by you, Charles, and can only have been done in the last 20 years when those participants have been alive. And, and you've cross-checked their impressions now with what they said then. And the result is an impression not just of towering historical authority, but the whole epoch rises again before us on every page. And if you were there, those of us who remember the late 1980s, early 1990s, and a few of you look as though you might, uh, it, is, it is intoxicating to be plunged back into that drama. And at the heart of it is a single glittering and terrible event, an assassination, a political extinction of a long-serving monarch. And just like Julius Caesar, the drama raises in all our minds the question, were they right, the people who'd done it? Were the regicides justified in what they did? And I know that some of them are possibly here tonight, or some of them associated with it. <laughs> and all I will say, I make no comment on their motives except to say that they are all honorable men. <laughs> Brutus, Cassius, and the rest, they're all honorable men. But what comes out so clearly from this book is that she was right, and she was so prophetic. She was right to have secret dealings with Nelson Mandela and the ANC to bring about Mandela's release and the end of apartheid. She was right to try to reform local government finance, by the way, even if the solution uh, that she eventually chose, uh, the one devised with characteristic brilliance by my friend Oliver Letwin, uh, didn't... <laughs> Didn't, didn't turn out to be entirely popular. She was right to oppose communism and to encourage uh, the, the, the fall of the Berlin Wall and, the, the, and right, by the way, to oppose the loony left in, in London. The, one, one of the few occasions that I actually met her myself, someone, I think it might have been Charles, uh, tried to explain who I was. And uh, she said, ah, yes, London. Someone really ought to get rid of that dreadful man, Ken Livingstone. And I was, I was too bashful uh, to explain that I, I just had. And, uh, and she, 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 was, she was right about the euro. She was right about the ERM, by the way. 
wasn't she? She was right about the Euro. And let's face it, she was right in her great 1988 Bruges speech. And if the continent, if our beloved continent of Europe had followed her proposals then for the development of the EU, I believe a lot of our problems would have not arisen and been solved. And I hope, therefore, tonight that when we go out from this merry gathering and when we are waylaid in the streets, as I'm sure we will be, by importunate, nose-ringed, dreadlocked, climate change protesters, we remind them that she was also right before her time about greenhouse gases. And she took it seriously. She took it seriously long before Greta Thunberg. And the best thing possible for the education of the denizens of those heaving, hemp-smelling bivouacs that now litter Trafalgar Square and, uh, and, and Hyde Park and the rest of, of London, the best thing for them would be to stop blocking the traffic and buy a copy of Charles's magnificent book <laughs> so that they can learn, so that they can learn about a true, a true feminist, green, and a revolutionary who changed the world for the better. And I propose that we all do the same. So Charles, congratulations to you for your services to uh, everything you've done for politics, uh, for history, and looking at the insights and the, the, the beautiful way that you've written this book, I think also to literature. And ladies and gentlemen, I have one final reflection, which is that you may not know it, but not only could we do Charles the honor of buying his book tonight, but the finest birthday present of all uh, we could give him is uh, to remember that his birthday falls on October the 31st. And wouldn't it, and wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be a fine thing for the author of this magnificent uh, book to have a very happy birthday indeed when that event falls. Thank you very much. Charles, well done.